Hello and welcome to this Racing Only Better Jump Season Preview Relax Chat. I am joined by Betfair's very own Rachel Blackmore and Paddy Power's very own Ruby Walsh. Hello, Vanessa. Hello, Ruby. <laughs> Hello Rachel, hey. how are you? I feel yeah. like I get a warmer reception from you, from one of our own. <laughs> how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, I'm very well, I'm very excited for National Hunt season. Are you? Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, is this your excited face? Stopped. It is my excited face, yeah I'm looking forward to it, yeah. Um, hopefully it'll be a good one. Yeah, um, will it though? <laughs> will it be a good one? I mean, just looking at... What are at next week's lot of numbers? <laughs> <laughs> How do we know? Uh, you're hoping it is. Yeah, it's going to be a competitive one, right? As in, other than the obvious superstar on Constitution Hill who will get to in due course. Below that, I think it's going to be a competitive national hunt season. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. So there's only one superstar, Constitution Hill. I'm talking about superstar category. So what would you call Gallop and Jump? Not yet a superstar. Jeez. Okay. What has Constitution Hill done to Gallup and Sean Peasant? Been unbeaten. That's a good answer. And for me, in terms of when you're talking about superstars, you're latching on to the ones that can really capture the wider public attention. Because he's, think... he's going to buy a run in England and stay in England and only going to run in England. I At knew... least Gallup and Sean goes across the pond and comes back. I knew you were going to give me a hard time about this. I'm but not. You're just, you're English. You're big enough to be an English horse. He's the, I know he's the only one I you have. I feel like I just want to go. Can I go? <laughs> I, know, no. I know he's the only one they have, but like... Okay, let's talk Constitution Hill then, whilst we're on the topic. Get that out of the way now, right? You've never ridden against... <laughs> yeah, you've never ridden against him, have you? I don't no, think. never ridden against him. Watched him from afar. Can you, as a viewer then, and a jockey, see any chinks in his armour? No. Straight up, just no. Well, you can't now. He hasn't faltered. He's done everything they've asked him to do. So hard to see any chinks as of yet. Yeah. What would your answer? I would have said no until I watched him in entry. And what changed your mind there? I thought he looked. He definitely wasn't. Now maybe you can argue that he wasn't at his best and he still won. But I thought he looked fallible at entry. I didn't think beating Charge. I thought it was a good step down from his champion hurdle run. I thought it was way below his fighting fifth run, below his Christmas run. I thought that, you know, maybe it was two and a half miles. Maybe that's the reason he hasn't gone chasing. But it was the first time I looked at him and thought, something will chin you someday. How? What will it be that chins him? I just think that if he turns up in that form against a Stateman and Imperi Pass, even against a Honeysuckle in a prime, something will chin him. The Charger wasn't getting any younger and he still ran second and ran closer to him than a lot of other horses had. Yeah. So I just think that one of those good novices, now Marine National is going chasing, but something will come along. For the first time I thought, mm, you're not unbeatable. You, you don't necessarily agree no, with I that. No, I suppose that gives, that gives excitement to it all. Mm. Um, and yeah, hope for every other jockey out there who isn't Nicola Bonville. Yeah, when you, that's actually a question. When you, Nico getting to ride him is obviously a complete privilege. You've had those privileges too, and you'll have more of those to come in your career with a bit of luck on those really, really good horses. As a jockey sitting in the weighing room, do you ever think, I wish I was riding him, I wish I was out there, or can you sit back and enjoy it from a racing point of view? Oh, you wish you were riding them, yeah, definitely. Um, especially if you're sitting in the weigh room and you don't even get a chance to ride against them. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're the horses that you'd love to be riding. And as you say, yeah, some of us are very privileged to, to get a chance to ride those superstars. And what about mindset though? Both of you have been in this position specifically, I suppose you with Honeysuckle, you with a number of horses, I guess, Ruby, but mindset when you're getting on a horse that's unbeaten or on an unbeaten run, when does it become less enjoyable because of the pressure or does it? Yeah. Pretty soon. <laughs> really? You're yeah. always under pressure then. You're under yeah. pressure to perform. It does, and the pressure goes with it. But the pressure goes once you get away from having to listen to people and talk to people. And once you're on the horse and you go to the start and people start asking the stop, same question over and over again, then the pressure goes. Yeah, it, really, it really does uh, become so black and white when you're counting down to the start. And like you've, you've, d you've gone through the race so many times, you've said all the things you need to say to the owners and the trainers and now you're just you're riding the race which is what we do every day we do it 
Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, all around the country. You know, it's the same the same objective you're trying to achieve. So it does get stripped back then. And yeah, you're just going out to ride in your race. And when you line up at the start in that moment and the tapes go back, are you, what goes, are you thinking, I'm going to really enjoy this now. I'm going to win this race. I'm going to really enjoy this now. Or is it no, like... No, you're not really thinking that. Well, I'm not thinking that anyway. Neither would I. <laughs> Hang on, let's have a bit of crack here. Yeah. You know, you're, uh, you're, you're just completely uh, focused on what's going on around you. Like you're, you're seeing, did that horse line up where I thought he was going to line up? You're, you're trying to take in everything that you can that, that might help you throughout the race. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so you're just, you're just in that moment. From Nico de Boinville's point of view, he's going into this season now with Constitution Hill like you did with Hurricane Fly circa 2011-12, would that be right? As in sort of very much on a horse that people expect to go through the season unbeaten. Is, does Nico do anything different now or does he just... No, it's, Hurricane Fly is probably very different to... to Constitution Hill in that as a young horse Hurricane Fly was quite keen so you were in a f sense a little bit limited as to what way you could ride him like if you booked him out to make the run and he'd have ran with you and just run away so you always were riding him for cover and then as people got and he was a very fast horse so people whilst they might try and make you too keen early in the race they also had to up the ante at some point to try and drag the speed out of him when, as he was younger now as he got older and he got more relaxed and he stayed better he became easier to ride but I would say he's he's a bit more like riding Cardo Star or or Big Bucks than maybe Hurricane Fly in that people are now going to line up behind Constitution Hill. Mm -hmm. Like who's going to want to give him a lead? You're not going to outstay him. You know what I mean? You're not going to make it easy for him. So people are going to line up behind Constitution Hill, and that becomes not so much boring, but it is straightforward. He can make the run. He yeah. watched him in the fighting fifth last year. He made it at entry. He's just dead straightforward. Now, somewhere along the way, maybe someone is going to jump out and try and go. But Nico's just going to sit second. Yeah. He did that in the Supreme. Like, Nico, was, one thing Nico the Bomber's not going to do is overcomplicate it. He doesn't do overcomplicate. No. Okay, that's Constitution Hill done and dusted then. Gold Cup division. You've it's already a weak division, it. according to you. No, not, there's I, no superstar in it. Okay. I did not say that, did I? Witness, did I say it was a weak division? This is being recorded so we can go back. <laughs> Gallop into Champs, okay. Let's just cover the Punchestown Gold Cup then. Because obviously him winning the Cheltenham Gold Cup, we're all waxing lyrical, everyone's going mad about the ride, everyone's falling over themselves with praise for this horse. And I was there, I was doing that as well. I was on that bandwagon. <laughs> And then Punchestown comes along, and I get it, end of a long season, three weeks after a tough race. But I was still disappointed. Is that not fair? Is that fair? Yeah, you would be, I suppose, but yeah, they're racehorses, you know what I mean? They, he put up an incredible performance in, in Cheltenham, and yeah, you're pretty hard to please. <laughs> I am hard to please, that is correct. You should know that about me. Um, but you rode in the Punchestown Gold Cup yourself, obviously on Envoy Allen. Um, look, I know you were well beaten, but in the race itself, how do you reflect on it now? Do you think that we should be taking that fast or slow form literally, or do you think that both Gallop and Deschamps and Brave Man's Game regret, or didn't, you know, didn't progress on, I suppose, from their Cheltenham run? equally <sighs> Ruby take it away so would you expect horses to progress from the Cheltenham Gold Cup no 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 right um, so you look at the Cheltenham Gold Cup so then you look say at look at what's happening now so what happened to South Africa between playing France and playing England I don't follow rugby because it makes you it's feel it's fairly queasy. obvious it's the same thing it was just that they are extremely fit animals, athletes. Yeah. But the sharpness goes out of them. Same with racehorses. Now, a racehorse can't talk to you to tell you how he's feeling. A rugby player can. But they, the rugby player still didn't recover in a week. Horses take longer, especially three-mile chasers, three-and-a-quarter-mile chasers. And that freshness is gone. But with a racehorse, you're always guessing. So you go from Cheltenham to Punchestown. It's a little bit more than three weeks. It was almost five weeks, was it? I think, yeah, that's correct. And you go there, you're thinking, well, he's back eating, he looks well, he looks fresh. Do I work him? Does he really need to work? He's very fit and becomes a balancing act. And you hope, after such a hard race like a Gold Cup, where you get an unbelievable 
race, an unbelievable performance. The right horses go at it, hammer and tongs all the way. The right two come to the fore the second last and pull clear of the field and one pulls clear of the other. And mm -hmm. it, to me, it was a brilliant race to watch. So then you think, well, how long would it take him to get over it? And then you look back through history. Some horses repeated that year after year. A lot of horses didn't. Caught a star one in 2007. But when he lined up in the old Roan in 2007, the following you know, October, he wasn't a patch on the horse that was there in 2006. You yeah. look at a Plutar when he won the first Betfair chase compared to a Plutar that ran the second Betfair chase after winning the Gold Cup. One wasn't a patch on the other. No. So how long can it take to get over a Gold Cup? Some horses can get over it in four weeks. It might take some horses six months. Yeah. But that's the, that's the skill of being a racehorse trainer because that animal can't talk to you and tell you how it's feeling. So you're trying to read it, look at it and guess it. So to me, the Punchestown farm, no, it's just... We're not taking they weren't it over. I anywhere wouldn't. near literally. But I never have. And even people used to always say, oh, Quivega should have been taking on big bucks in the three mile hurdle. If you could go back to Punchestown and win the three mile hurdle, there wasn't a patch on the stairs hurdle. And the one year she went to Punchestown and took on the championship horses from Cheltenham, it was Punjabi and the other horse in the champion hurdle, she got beaten. Punchestown Farm can be hard to stack up. And maybe that's why I shouldn't be putting the same emphasis on Constitution Hill not being as good at entry. But he's running at much shorter distances. Yeah. And I think when you get right up in distance, it becomes hard. Yeah. Marathon runners only run two marathons a year. Mm. It's very interesting. The Aplutard, you mentioned Aplutard, obviously. Clearly his season last season was not what everyone would have hoped from him. And he's obviously mentioned the recovery from a Gold Cup that hasn't quite happened. He still remains a relative. He's not an old horse anyway. Do you still have a bit of faith that this season he can show something like what he was showing two seasons back? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, you have to, you know what I mean? Um, uh, like last season just went completely wrong for him in every sense uh, so yeah really looking forward to him this season um, and yeah you have to be like that when you're the lucky one that gets to ride him and you know he's won a gold cup so we know he can do it and uh, yeah just hoping he can he's in very good hands to get him back to his best so hopefully he can. When you know when he got hampered in the Gold Cup and then you obviously pulled up on him was it three out or whatever kind of summarised his season really you say just it just so much went wrong for him and he obviously had the setbacks at home as well it's just it must have been so frustrating yeah frustrating for sure um, but yeah look uh, we're we're looking ahead to this season now with him and and hopefully he can you know get back to his yeah. best. And he's happy at home. Yeah, he's all good. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to him. Do you have horses in your past that, what would be an example of a horse that you had ridden that had one of those standout seasons and then just couldn't build on it again? Cotto was one. His first year to his second year. Like the horse that Cotto, when he went, when his first Gold Cup, he started in the old Rowan, Bedfair Chase, Tingle Creek, King George, Aon Gold Cup. Two miles, three miles, three and a quarter miles, two and a half miles. You wouldn't get that again now, would you? Like, who would do but that? But he was now? just, he was just at that year unbeatable. Yeah. But the following year, he went back to the old Rowan, and people would say, "Oh, he was carrying much more weight." But at no stage in the old Rowan behind Monet's Garden was he ever going to beat him. He was just a tired or horse that year. He went from there to unseating Sam at the last in Haydock behind Snoopy Loopy. He won a King George, but he got home in it. He didn't go to the Aon because then man did. Cotto went to Ascot. Yeah, he won impressively but he was entitled to level weights with Monet's Garden went to the Gold Cup and from no stage was he going to win mm. from the word go whereas the following season then he was back to the horse he'd been the year before and that just took time Paul got him back I don't know back, what, I summer. couldn't tell you yeah. I'm not, not a racer trainer I don't know what he did or how they managed it but he was a different horse and when you watch him in the 2009 Gold Cup he was never going to lose no Barry fell, he looked like a horse that could win a Tingle Creek, whereas in the whole of the year before, he looked, you were looking at him thinking, how did that win a Tingle Creek? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so they can regress and come back. Of course they can, yeah. ups yeah, and downs. I think yeah. we, we... Hurricane Fly as well, Hurricane yeah. Fly did it, had a, had a down year in the middle mm -hmm. and bounced back incredibly, incredible. Yeah. I think we, uh, so I find that the press in general and mo like, and then obviously that pushes on to racing fans. It's like it's so much about recency bias. You know, we just so often only think about the last few runs. Why are you laughing? <laughs> because it's the truth. It's the truth, right? It's all, it's just recency bias. Like we've got a very short memory. Yeah. And then when something bounces back, we're suddenly like, wow, what a training performance or what a ride or whatever. But actually the horse always has that level of ability. 
Uh, Plutard, just last point on him. Took a Manila in, though. There's two. Yeah, exactly. Manila what are you doing now with them, Marst? <laughs> But, um, Manella Indo, obviously we've seen him back already. There'll be a, probably a point in this season where you'll have to make a decision between the two of them. Yeah, go on, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, it's was, October. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to ask that. I wasn't going to ask that. All, no, all I was going to ask is when you have a decision to make and same question to you, what, like, who do you listen to? I always think how tough this must be. I think about it with jockeys on the flat all the time because they've got multiple options. Who do you listen to? What do you take into account? How do you make that decision? Well, we both made the wrong decision on... Oh. <laughs> the They're the only yeah. ones you remember. You'll yeah. never remember the right decisions the right you decisions. make. You'll yeah. only remember the wrong ones. When you make you... a wrong decision, I'm not being funny, team. It must just be the worst thing in the world. Not really. <laughs> like, when you watch a horse win a gold cup, like... Well, we've done that. Or a big race. We've definitely done that, but I would say, if you said those worst things have happened in my life. Do you okay, know what? You... you, you yeah, I remember, I think you said it to me before, that there's always going to be one that's going to be harder to watch winning, you know what I mean? Like, as in you... When you can't split them. Yeah, when you can't split them, when you can't split them, they're 50-50 in your head, who's going to be harder to watch winning? And that'll just edge you that 1% one way or the other, I think. Mm. Um, you know, that's that's your deep down gut. Wh- wh- which which way would you go? Yeah. Um, so and like, yeah, you know, you're you're taking everything into consideration, obviously. And yeah, it's a uh, God like, isn't it such a class position to be in that you do have a choice between two horses in a gold cup, for instance, like it's, it's incredible. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, what was the worst wrong decision you made with horses, not in life? Just uh, I should definitely ride and, but it was the wrong decision and the more I think about it as I get older and look back on it like Cardo Denman Denman Cardo Cardo Denman like Denman won Ego Cup and two Hennessy's I rode him in one of them or Ladbroke Trophies or mm. Coral Trophies whatever they are now I rode him in one of them I rode him in an RSA so he won a Gold Cup without me and I was injured when he won a Hennessy but most of his other big days I still rode him anyway but when you look at what all of Denman won and you look at what all of Cardo Star won like how did was I not going to ride him in the Gold Cup? 100%, yeah. No. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So you like, yeah. think you picked the wrong one, but really and truly. It's only yeah. if you had a crystal ball. Yeah. yeah. But then there's the politics in the, of it. In the moment. But then the there's moment. the politics of it. So you, like, whatever way you look at it, when you get off one horse, you're pissing off another owner. Simple as that. You have not chosen their child to be on the team. It's as simple as that. And that's the way it works. And you have offended them. Very few owners don't take it as an offence when you don't ride the horse. And that's what you're balancing as well. So how do you try? And that's why most jockeys will never say, I think I might ride that one. Because as soon as you suggest you're on that one, they want someone else on the other one. Mm. So you're trying to keep the rides in all those horses. And at the end of the day, jockeys, with the exception of very few, are self-employed. They're not on contracts. So they have to try and maximise their earning potential and keep as many rides as they can in the air to maximise their own careers. Yeah. So you don't want to fall out with anybody. Is that something you struggle with or do you just kind of find that quite yeah, easy to you're, manage? You're, that's, that's a position, a great position to be in. But yeah, it is about just juggling that and trying to manage that. And, you know, you can see why owners are frustrated when, you know, maybe you've ridden their horse in the build up to a big race and... You know, then there's two in it and, and you don't choose theirs. You, you can see completely where they're coming from, you know. Mm. But, uh, yeah, it's just trying to juggle it all. You can, but do they always see where you're coming from? Do they always see where... Some do. Some, some do, some, some do, don't. some don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't like to be in but that But they're position. all great in general. We yeah. love them all. <laughs> we love all our owners. <laughs> um, other horses on our list that you're connected with, but sort of for a wider discussion, the likes of Envoy Allen, and I'm also going to loop in Bob Ollinger, just as horses who have disappointed, come back, run good races, run bad races. How frustrating is that with a horse like, let's focus in on Bob Ollinger, I suppose, more than Envoy Allen, in the sense of what he showed over hurdles and that real zip he had, like he seems to have gone missing in action. Yeah, look. Uh... Does he though? When you think about it, a horse's easiest year, easiest two years, are both their novice years. Novice hurdling, novice chasing, when they can be way superior to the opposition. So Bob Ollinger was a superior novice hurdler, but that's all he was. 
Yeah, I think he can't be discounted. He will be back again. I still retain my faith in him. When we have this conversation, right, about what she got left, seven, eight years max, we'll remind her of that statement. And she might eventually tell us the truth. But that is her job now. <laughs> Keep all the balls in the air, in the air. and try not drop them. Yeah, no, but I that's get that. I rode I loads that. of horses that were the best novices and then just didn't move up. And why do you go then from being a good but, novice herder to novice chasing? Because you don't want to take on the open horses. But you what maximize he Maximise their career, maximise their potential. But that day at Cheltenham, when he went past Brave Man's Game and there's that great shot of him, and I think you were wearing the head cam at the time, weren't you, as well? Um, I just can't get that out of my mind. Like, surely that engine is still in there somewhere. Am I... But how does Mastermind to go from winning a champion chase a distance? Yeah, that was... To scraping home the following year by four lengths. Mm. To not winning the third one. <laughs> that happens. Yeah, like if only we could interview the horses. Oh, it would be so much it. more fun. Yeah. They might it say something. Be. It would be. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a lot more fun. Um, You're just in a much easier position to talk now, okay? Yeah, he's Me? smug about yeah. it as well. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, smug he about it, it too. He's, he's just like, tired. <laughs> I don't have any balls to juggle. I've just got the one ball and I'm happy. It's my ball and I'm playing with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, quick mention to Envoy Allen, because obviously it was great to see him back winning the Ryan Air Chase. And you can crab the form all you like, which obviously we will do. Why though? It's about winning the race on the day. Yeah, no, look, and I'm here for it basically <laughs> and he had like I was delighted to see him back basically and like I said people will crab the form but I thought that was he had so much hype around him when he was with the old team and then for Henry to get him to do that on the day and basically just look like his heart and head was in it is that fair is that a fair comment yeah he was he was electric on the day it was fantastic it was it was um a brilliant day to win that race. Henry, all his family were there. Um, so it was, yeah, a really special win and a special day. And uh, yeah, look, obviously he disappointed um, in Goran the other day. Um, but yeah, look, it's a long season ahead. Mm. Same colours, Quilixios the other day, by the way. That's it, the last. I know you'll just say it's luck. I'm so good, I can do it with no hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That, did you think you were coming off? No, I actually didn't. When you watch it, when you watch it and when I wrote it, it was it happened so fast, like his head was down and up so quickly. It didn't feel uh, half as bad and when you see a picture. But I think he was going with so much momentum that he was down and up and he stayed straight, which mm. is a big help for a jockey. I think the pictures are quite dramatic compared to when you watch it real speed. Yeah, re real speed, it was it was fine. I was just like, oh, drop my reins, feck's sake. Uh, but uh, yeah, the picture is more dramatic looking. Whilst we're talking about dropping things, dare we venture into dropping whips? What is it? One every 150, 200 rides? 200 probably? 150 for me probably. 150, yeah. Probably definitely drop it three, four times in a season, probably. Now that I think about it, 600 rides, yeah. 150, one every 150. You're just, you're just hoping the day you drop it is Damel and Tremor and Ballon yeah. Rob and there's no one looking. And not, not on TV. <laughs> Aintree. <laughs> yeah. Not Aintree when Ruby Walsh is dissecting it. So I threw it away in the champion or the stairs or didn't I? Yeah, big on Big Box you did. You love that. Yeah. yeah. Still one, thank God. Yeah. Thank you feel God. lucky those days, don't you? So Cause lucky, yeah. Yeah. Because you know it's a it's a technical thing that is no one else's fault. It's your fault. It's a... It's, uh, well, it's topical yeah. right now because of Ashim Murphy with Via Sistina. Yeah. It's going to happen. And like he was, I happened to be walking by, I don't know what they were calling it, fan zone or something in Ascot the other day. And he was on a, an equisizer. Oh, yeah, before, before racing. And a kid asked him if he ever dropped his whip in a big race. And he said, no, touch wood. Like about three no hours way. later. Yeah, no, he did say touch wood, right? But it does happen. He goes to the toilet, loses on his little finger and it's gone. And like you'd feel like crying. But contrary to what a lot of people believe, like it, what the whip is used for is like the last piece of encouragement in a, dr in a gym. You're only trying to stop your horse from slowing down. Mm. It doesn't make them actually go any faster. It's to keep the effort up and stop you slowing down. And to me, it probably cost her. I was lucky Big Bucks got away with it. You were lucky JP's horse got away with it in the entry. But it, it happens. It's People miss penalties. People drop the ball running over the try line. Yeah, for sure. Um, we better mention Captain Guinness, just whilst we're rattling through horses here. I mean, I know he's a nearly horse, and he's. Is, are you going to bite my head off if I say he's not a top-level horse, Captain Guinness? No, you're 
Same with yous. Thank you. When did I bite your head off already? I don't think you did, but I'm just nervous that you might because of the... Keep on your toes. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, Captain Guinness last season, he ran some great races, to be fair to him, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He's, he's a fantastic horse. Um, so he just, he he's there, but just hasn't gotten fully the way up yet. But uh, yeah, he was brilliant last year. Um, it was a great day when he won the Fortria. So yeah, hopefully we've another few good days with him again. So going through him, you rode him in Sandown. April, was it? Yeah. John Bond beat him. Yeah. So having ridden in champion chases, could you see John Bond becoming that level of horse? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I think he's going to have a good season at John Bond. Over here, over in England he will. Over in Ireland, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> over in England he will. Yeah. And then El Fabiolo will come across. Yeah, but like that would probably mean with no energy mean winning the Schlur Tingle Creek Victor uh, Clarence House. Yeah. Do you think that I do like? Yeah, no, that would be lovely. But do you think um, John Bond would be able to turn the tables with El Fabiolo at any stage when if they met and they're firing on all cylinders again? You never know. Um, like I'd say if El Fabiolo has an Achilles heel, it'll be his jumping. He definitely needs to get a fraction higher. You love two milers to so always take the top of the fence, but you would definitely like to see him snap up a bit quicker in front. Is he a very he big horse? No. He's not small, but he's no yeah. he's not. But it's I don't know his size the right way. Like you talked about Denman earlier. Like when Denman before he had that heart condition, like he was a big, huge horse, but he could dance in front of a jump. Mm. He had great agility. Um whereas Ed Fabiolo he just does gallop on a little bit mm. when he should be getting a bit quicker in front. Yeah, John Bond's an interesting one uh, in the sense of he's a very different horse to a typical JP horse. They're very aggressive with him, with the way they ride him. Is I think that suits him, doesn't it? I think it suits him, yeah. but I think if they tried to be le if they tried to be less aggressive with him, would he would he get further? Is my question. Would they be able to stretch him out? They ride him in that. You know, he likes that very forward aggressive fashion. Is he a half brother or a full brother to do Half is, is it? Full brother. Full. Full. Yeah. Is there stamina in that pedigree? Duvan? One of Conmel Oil, but that's down two grades from from where he was at championship level. Maybe he would stay. Um, mm. I don't know. I'm just not sure he... I'd say he could be better than he has been, John Bunn. Okay. Personally. Um, I just don't think he jumped in the Arkle for whatever reason. I've definitely watched him jump a lot better than he jumped in the Arkle. Okay. That's interesting. More to come. Um, whilst we're just flipping through topics here, Dublin Racing Festival. How has that changed the season, National Hunt season profile? Do you think it has at all in terms of the calendar of the way horses are being trained? No. No? No, I don't. Um, it's probably become a festival, whereas it always was three weekends. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I was riding, they were three huge, well, two and a smaller one f in January and early February. They were always there. Mm. Irish Champion, or the Irish Gold Cup, all those races. Now, bar the uh, two-mile chase, that used to be the old Thai cottage that was in Punchestown that was brought into Dublin Racing Festival. But the rest of those races have just been moved back a week and forward a week yeah. to create the Dublin Racing Festival. But they were always part of Willie Mullins' schedule, yeah. Gordon Elliott's. Does it make any Henry's. difference to you? No, I suppose it just gives it gives a weekend for them gives to a more profile and yeah. yeah profile and it has a name now Dublin Racing Festival you know and that's that's a weekend that that you know people go racing and aim for that weekend yeah. and race scores and so on but yeah as trainers perspective I suppose it's not the money spent dreaming up DRF <laughs> will pay for the money spent dreaming up Iris CF <laughs> ICF whatever you call that waste of time. Hey, yeah. Oh, that marketing, that, that was a disaster. Oh, you see it. Jesus Christ, please. <laughs> Some people paid a lot of money for that. Some people to get the idea. Yeah. That's what I mean, yeah. Just put the letters together and create the idea. <laughs> yeah. um, but from a jockey's point of view, it's like having another festival, another thing for the press to build up to. We know it's that's not your remit, Rachel. Like, we know. Is it not? That I thought she loved it. She loves it. Loves it. Profile. It's the worst part of the game, isn't Vanessa's it? Vanessa's question. Go on, it's the worst part of the game, isn't it? Having to talk to me twice a year. 
yeah, but I suppose at least you want to talk to me. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. You said, yeah, talking to her was the worst part of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I can take it, I can take it. Um, you relish the press. You were so good with the press. And now look at you. You just like you played the them press. around like little chess pieces, just had a great time with them, whizzed out his little one-liners. You thrived off it. It was fine for you. If people aren't natural at it or don't enjoy it, it is It is a thought. It is like, it's an. It's not an enjoyable part of the being a professional sports person in racing is it if, if you if you don't enjoy speaking to the media yeah but the media only usually want to talk to you um from a positive angle i suppose yeah. um and yeah that's a good thing the fact that you're wanted mm -hmm. everyone wants to be wanted do it yeah in general <laughs> but you did you loved it right i didn't mind it it's not it's i suppose Judy, is it a Judy? I Has it got? It. I think it's got Two worse cents. now, hasn't it? Like for Rachel riding now versus you riding. I, I don't. I don't like absolutely hate it or anything. No, I know, I know, but I just mean like. Why would you say it's gotten worse? It's just you know social media. More people can whip out a phone and be like, "Let's go. Let's you know. Can well, we have a line used to on?" Used to walk around with table cards. That's true. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Social media is a choice. You choose to. Exactly. You choose to read it, look at it, take the good, take the bad. I actually. And I've often thought to myself, geez, I hate that the abuse I'm getting. And I stopped looking. None of us ever got abused. Did you watch the Beckham documentary? I did yeah. watch the Beckham documentary. Like, Jesus Christ, do you Football think you're getting abuse fans, yeah. on social yeah. media? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Gave we me are, a whole other level of respect. We are yeah. living in a different yeah. world. Different even world. think that because there's 15 yeah. or 100 people mm. calling you this, that, or the other on a page. Yeah. Mother of Christ, yeah. we're going soft. I would even thought that of myself watching <laughs> the Beckham documentary yeah. thinking, you blouse. Look yeah. at the abuse he's getting. Yeah. And, and it's, it's the whole match, it's just on him. At least Six, if, you get, if you get someone shouting at you, walking back in after a race, you know, you, walk, you can keep walking into the way room. Yeah. He's but trying to he do his job. In it. Yeah, yeah, in it. I tell yeah. you, we the Incredible. world has gone soft when you look yeah. at the abuse he got. At this time of year, I mean, like it is ridiculous to talk about horses for big races in the spring, obviously. For you as a jockey, mindset wise, do you... Like, where are you at right now? As in, are you off the back of a nice summer and just sort of... I'll tell you where she is right now. Yeah. Wondering, is there a novice hurdler down in Henry the Bombheads that's going to come along to be another honeysuckle? Has she ridden something over hurdles that's going to go novice chasing, like the horse of JPs, that could turn into another La Plutar? That's okay. just about where she is right now. Do you have any answers to those questions? No, that's in... I'm in agreement, yeah. That's what you're thinking? Yeah, like it's a... The horses are all back in now. You know they're 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 doing bits of work. They're they're starting to they're starting to get going. We're starting to get a feel for them. And yeah, you're just hoping that there's something there that can carry you a bit through the season. When you're as established as you are, and you know you're riding as you're riding, it's brilliant. Like that comes naturally to you. Yeah, you never feel that established. But anyway, go on. You don't. Well, like. Yeah, you're, you're, there's a constant there that you have to remain established. Like, you, you're, you don't become established and then you're there and you're, that's it, you're, you're up there now. Thank God I'm up there. But, you know, you have, to, you have to try and stay riding winners constantly to stay up there, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. that's riding winners wh whatever day you're going racing. Week in, week it's not out, just sort of about the, the bigger days, you know. Yeah. But... In the, any profession, you know, like when I start a year, I think to myself, what could I do differently? What could I do better? Like lots of people look to develop. Is there anything at the start of a season that you think, do you know what, I want to do more of that or I want to do less of that? Do you ever think like that? Well, you want to ride more winners. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there's, there's lots of things yourself personally that you want to try and improve on. Like as jockeys, you're always... You know, every day you ride, you're learning something about a horse, about a track, about fellow jockeys. You know, you're always able to pick up on stuff. So th the more you ride, the more knowledge you have. Like when you retired, the day you retired, you had the most knowledge you could have had because, you know, that's just what you get from riding. Mm. And you're, you're always, you know, every day you're picking up bits. So you're always getting better in your head anyway. What she said there about never feeling never really feeling like you're fully established and you're going to stay there. Did, I bet you felt fully established and no. that you were going to stay there. No, that's why she's a chance of staying at the top. You don't. And you feel like you've cracked it. 
Even when you thought. were in your absolute prime, you yep. didn't think, no. I've got this. Who's coming on my heads? Who's trying to take my rights? Who's coming after me? How do I stay on top of them? And how do I stay ahead of all of them? That's what you're always thinking. And you don't start at the start of the season. What am I going to do next year? You get up every morning thinking, what can I do better this week than I did last week? Jockeys ride all year round. Mm. It doesn't go, whilst the season might change and your tallies might change, your performance is judged every day, yeah. every week. And you're on a constant treadmill and you have to go with it. And there is no jockey lucky enough that they can think, I've cracked it, not even Ryan Moore. Frankie the Tory? No. Because I suppose you're in a losing game, as the saying goes. You're losing more than you're winning. But you're in a game that... Where the, the, there's, there's people behind you, as Ruby oh, said. Like, there's, there's, there's so many good riders in the way in Ireland. Like, so many. Uh, but, you know, there's only a lucky few that get... that were in the right place at the right time and get on these good horses. Everyone mm. is trying to get on the horses that... that you're lucky you're, enough to ride. And when you're on them, your job is making sure but you don't need the others on them. Yeah. I suppose it's the same in all walks of life if you're a freelancer, basically. Basically. Because I'm terrified. It's like I'm terrified somebody's going to nick my job, my seat. That'd be terrible. So you're always... How do we organise that? <laughs> Stop. We'll vote for Ruby you. Walsh. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I, it's just very relatable, that's all. I think lots of people, specifically yeah, freelancers you, you don't, in any walk of life. But you don't, sign a, you don't sign a contract and say, you know, these are my, these are my no. 30 horses I'm riding all year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Th Anything that doesn't happen. happen. That yeah. does not happen. So every day you go out to ride them um, is, could be your last time riding them. You just don't know. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You, you have to perform all the time. All joking aside, did you in your career at any point have not like a confidence wobble but you've expressed how you feel week to week and you're constantly looking at your inner thinking who's coming up behind me but like did you ever have a severe i suppose confidence wobble at any stage oh i'm sure i did um probably didn't look at it maybe as technically as that or as what kind of word am i looking for um maybe wouldn't have seen it that way but not sure i was ever a believer in confidence confidence is only what is confidence confidence is only the, the ability to think in a positive way yeah it frustrates me mentally when people say you know god you're riding with so much confidence i'm like i'm just this horse is good enough to win like do you know what i mean that, doing that, the same that, thing that, as i was doing last yeah, week yeah I, I i rode just as well last week except the horse i was riding did not have the same ability as this one you know what i mean so it's it's like deep down as a jockey, you, you know, you do have to believe in yourself. You don't have to tell everyone, but mm. it's, yeah, I think people get a bit confused about confidence and, and how jockeys ride, you know, I, she's riding with no confidence and like, it's, it's I hard, agree with you. you know. I, I agree. And I never went to the start thinking, thinking that I couldn't win on ours. So maybe that was arrogance or self-belief or whatever it was, but I never went to the start. And I did learn that night follow day so you get on a run where they'd win and then you get on a run where they'd be running bad you get a clatter of falls a load of them would finish second and then they come back into winning but i learned over time to realize that it was how the yard i was riding for was going now i was lucky in that i was riding for paul and willie so when paul would be flying willie be quiet and then i'd be back here and paul would be gone quiet and willie be flying so i was lucky that it stayed pretty level but i could track the form of the yards i was riding for but people would trace it to the way a jockey was riding. It's very rarely how the jockey is riding. It's most likely the form of the yard. And a trainer in form, to me, is more important than a jockey in form. Yeah. Could you have done the travel he did, by the way? You know, that like yeah, England any, to Ireland Anyone thing. could have, definitely. Yeah. It's a great crash. If, if, you had, if you had the horses he was going over to ride and come on back to ride here, yeah. yeah. If you had a jockey's license and you were offered that, you wouldn't be turning it down. You wouldn't be shirking the, the flight. No. Um, last few comments on this season ahead. So you're rev for it. You're looking forward to it. You're in a confident yeah, I, I, she's I, probably, looking I it. probably don't she's sound She's just rev. exuding enthusiasm and confidence. Rev, and but I am. Uh, so I'm going to light a bomb on you. Get you going. <laughs> she's just in a relaxed place. I like it. I'm not very relaxed right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm very relaxed. I'm thoroughly enjoying myself here. 
Yeah. Uh, you though, So you think it's going to be a good season then as a whole, overall? You think we're on for a, a competitive season? I'm glass season? half full. Yeah. I am. And look, people look at it different ways and people will say, oh, it could be dominated by Willie and it could be dominated by early in the year by Gordon and he then only be Gordon v Willie and Henry chip, j- chipping in and the same in the UK. Oh, but to me, it's about what horses are taking each other on. Yeah. And I think there's still plenty of good horses out there to clash. And I do look forward to this time of year because you get maiden winners, beginners chase winners. There's loads of options for the established horses to get their season started. First highlight probably being the Betfair chase and then it rolls on for the top yeah. class horses. So, yeah, well, I think it'll be a great season. Betfair chase, we'll see Brave Man's Game win that and that'll get us all really rooting for him. Yeah, and he'll back it up in the King George. I mean, you know, that should be renamed the Paul Nichols King George or the Paul Nichols Chase or whatever. Yeah. He's won it that much. But it, it just, yeah, it'll the season will establish itself and I think it'll be great. Great. Okay, well, we've finished on a positive note then. I'm very happy with that. You think it'll be great. Constitution Hill all the way. Just tell me the last bad season. Pardon? Tell me the last bad season. There you go. I rest, I rest my case, Your Honour. That was Racing Only Better's pre-season chat. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more Betfair content coming your way soon. But for now, thank you very much for watching and listening.